So the Digital Library of the Middle East uh, is an aggregation project of Middle Eastern library uh, resources. Um, it is a project that has, has been developed in partnership with uh, CLEAR, Stanford Libraries, um, and Qatar National Library with support by uh, the Mellon Foundation and going forward Qatar National Library. Um, it's been in development over the last um, year and a half and is currently in this work cycle moving into a, a more of a service phase going forward. So this work cycle is really geared towards um, uh, making sure the application is completely ready for launch. Um, welcome to the demo of the DLME work cycle that uh, the Access team is currently working on. Um, I'm going to start off by uh, covering some of the more general visual appearance updates uh, that we've made during this work cycle. Um, as a point of reference, um, what I'm showing right now is the uh, deal with me site as we left it in the previous work cycle, which in terms of the visual styling was fairly uh, uh, generic and just kind of a placeholder. But now I'm going to switch and show you what we're um, currently working on in the current work cycle and talk about some of the, the general changes we've made to the visual appearance. So the first thing is um, one of our colleagues created um, a logo for DLME. To be able to uh, include that logo in the masthead, we um, had to sort of change up the masthead a little bit from the typical stock spotlight masthead layout. Uh, so we've done some rearranging of elements here, changed the color palette of the site to use um, blue, this blue as our uh, primary color and adjusted some of the other uh, colors uh, to coordinate with that. We've also uh, changed our font that we're using uh, based on some feedback from our project partner, uh, Cutter National Library. They recommended a different font to use, especially thinking um, from the Arabic uh, view of the site, which I'll switch to now. Uh, the Arabic view is not completely representative of what will be the final view because we're still working on translations for things. Uh, but here you can get the general sense of how the, the new font looks uh, in Arabic. And when we switch back to English, this is sort of the, uh, the Latin uh, version of the site, what we see in, when we're in English. We also did some uh, sort of coordinating styling changes to uh, the Mirador viewer, which you get when looking at uh, some of the items in DLME. So, these are pretty subtle changes, but we've just um, customized the Mirador Viewer to coordinate um, the blue as the primary color to sort of match the, the blues we're using um, elsewhere on the site. A couple other uh, pages where we've made some visual appearance updates. Uh, statistics is one. Done a few things here. Um, one is pretty simple, but it was an important change, which was to add commas to our longer uh, numbers. We've also added a, the ability to display multiple countries for a single um, institution in the contributors tables. Uh, before, every institution could only have one country associated with it, but now, if a given institution has more than one country associated with it, we will show those in a comma uh, separated list. Uh, and then we've also made a, a fairly big change on the statistics page by breaking out contributors into two distinct categories, one being item contributors and one being data contributors. Um, and that's sort of to better, better reflect the different types of contributions uh, we're getting from our contributors. And so we highlight those in the, the two, uh, these two summary boxes at the top, and then there's a separate table for item contributors and a similar table, but uh, reflecting the, the data contributors we build that. And then finally, um, just a couple minor things about the about pages. Um, there are a couple of forms that um, existed um, 
before that, we want to be able to integrate nicely into the site. So for example, this is a email signup form that's hosted by our project partner, uh, Clear. Um, and so we did some styling work to make it integrate into our about pages and, and styling wise feel fairly um, consistent with the rest of the site styling. And then similarly, uh, we have another form um, that allows visitors to suggest a collection that might be added to uh, DLME. Um, and this is a Google form, um, but we're um, integrating it into the into the about page um, and styling it so it looks fairly fairly integrated um, into the into the site. And we do both of these both of these forms um, via the iframe widget in Spotlight. Since Spotlight doesn't have a, a direct way to add form fields, um, but it does have the iframe widget, which allows us to integrate those two forms uh, into the site uh, fairly nicely. And I think that covers sort of the general visual design updates we've made. And uh, I'm going to stop sharing and turn it over to Camille. I am going to be demonstrating some of the integrations we have set up for managing translations uh, for the DLME project. Uh, one of the complexities of DLME is that uh, translation data is scattered across at least eight different GitHub repositories and two different GitHub organizations. So um, to, kind of, to help manage that complexity, we have uh, adopted TransFX uh, to help our translation partners at uh, Cutter National Library. So, uh, what that does is it takes a, you know, kind of uh, dry YAML file uh, that we, we normally work with in a Rails context. Uh, we're able to import these files and see them in a uh, more translator-friendly user interface. Um, so you can see in this example that I have imported uh, language files from the Spotlight project, and that gives us a little bit of visibility into uh, the, the relative translation status of, of, of the different project languages. Um, so TransFX uh, offers uh, GitHub integrations. So uh, as new keys are added to uh, upstream Spotlight and GitHub, TransFX will uh, automatically sync at least once a day and add those keys to this interface. So you can see, for example, uh, the Arabic translations uh, for the Spotlight repo. You can see some of, or uh, we can uh, filter those by uh, which keys have not been translated, uh, which have been translated but not reviewed. And we can also see a little bit of context here, um, like what key uh, these correspond to. And there are also, I think, some features where you can add in uh, screenshots and other comments uh, to provide some more context around these keys. Uh, a major piece of work in Upstream Spotlight has also been uh, finding a way to integrate this TransFX workflow um, with our uh, translation forms. Uh, so you can see here uh, in, uh, in DLME, we have some translations uh, from, from, from previous work on the DLME project, but there are still a couple that are in progress. Uh, so one, of, uh, one, one thing we've been working on is finding a way to get, uh, get YAML files out of this interface into TransFX and then get that information once it's been translated and reviewed out of TransFX back into uh, Spotlight. So I'm gonna do a quick demo of this. This is actually in a, a Spotlight demo. You can see there are two buttons here. So uh, first I'm going to export the base uh, English file. 
And so what that looks like is um, this YAML file with uh, navigation elements, search fields, all this information that is available in English. Um, and so going over to Transfex, I will create a new resource. And I'll tell Transfex this is a real YAML file. And you can see that it has imported all of the English, uh, English strings. Um, but you can see when I scroll down to this form, I have some pre-existing translations in Arabic that I would also like loaded into Transfex. So I'll export that YAML file as well. And you can see that it is mostly empty, uh, but the strings that I translated are present. And going over to Transfex again, I will also, I'll select the Arabic language and upload my file. And you can see that uh, those two strings have been added to Arabic. Um, so now let's take a look at the workflow, uh, entering translations in Transifex and exporting those to Spotlight. So here we are in our languages panel. I'm gonna select Spanish. You can see here that our translator has provided three words. So I'm going to download that file for use. And you can see Transifex has exported this YAML file. It's mostly empty, uh, but I have a, a few translations that were provided. I'm gonna head over back to Spotlight and switch to Spanish. Select my YAML file and hit import. And back in our Spanish translations, we can see uh, there's, there's one of the keys that was provided. Okay, I think that is it for Transifex. Uh, so I'm gonna turn things over to Jesse. Thank you, Camille. So um, I'd like to demo some improvements that we've made to the date range facets um, in DLME. Um, one of the things that I'll call out uh, first off is that um, in the default implementation of our date range facet, there are handles um, overlaid on the histogram as well as these controls here for selecting um, the date range. Um, and so we've modified that uh, to remove those handles, um, which was a change that had to be made uh, upstream in a different library. Um, we've also added, uh, which I'll show here in the Gregorian date range, um, some labels on the um, axis of the histogram, uh, indicating where uh, things that are um, uh, BCE or CE dates. Um, that is uh, in particular for Gregorian. Um, in addition, for the Hidri date range, um, slider, we have uh, BH uh, for uh, before Hidri and then um, H for Hidri. So um, the hope is that uh, adding these labels uh, helps clarify um, particularly the fact that we have um, negative dates in some of these date ranges, but also these two different calendaring systems that are uh, represented here in, uh, in this application. Um, and I would also just like to call out and show um, that uh, these um, are, are working um, similarly uh, in the um, right to left uh, UI. So the uh, both the Hidri and Gregorian date range slider UI uh, is available um, with all of these improvements. Finally, I wanna share two small changes we've made to our application uh, during this work cycle. The first is the addition of subtitles to browse categories. Um, before we started this work cycle, 
you could provide a title for browse category, um, as you see here, 1 to 621 CE. Um, but in this application, we also want to include the Hijri dates, um, because we think both are useful to people um, browsing this website. Uh, and you can see here, we've added um, kind of a, a, essentially a, a caption to the browse category to include the history dates as well. Um, and these dates propagate throughout the application um, and can be translated appropriately within the uh, translation section of the website. Second, uh, we just want to demonstrate the existence of a JSON API for retrieving data from uh, the DLME website. Um, both search results and individual items are available as JSON, and you can access those through content negotiation or adding a format equals JSON parameter to uh, the end of any URL. Um, for a search result, you'll get a variety of documents, some brief metadata about them, and the original um, intermediate representation for a DLME, which includes a variety of information um, from which you can derive applications um, or other, other third-party integrations with the DLME website. Similarly, individual items um, have similar metadata attached to them, um, including uh, multi-value fields, as well as fields with information in both English and Arabic or other languages. Okay.